I'm going to start off with basic visualization so that will give us a view on loading a model and how you can use the toolbars and functions so um, if I go into that now so this is me wearing the device if you turn your palm to the sky the menu comes to you and it sticks to your palm if you turn your palm over it locks it in space if you look away look back it remains there um, you can also grab the tabs using the finger recognition so and place it you know where you where you want to use it if we hit sign in that accesses our server and makes all the data available to the device and then we come choose a data set so a basic assembly here and then we choose which experience we want to load in so at this we've selected visualization and that loads the model in for us to visualize if i just move that menu out of the way you can see here we've got a geometry and we can grab that and we can move it around our environment so using one hand we can grab and turn it alternatively we can use two hands which will scale it and again enable the user to to move and rotate it freely as required so if we bring the menu back we can hit full scale reset it back to as it should be if we turn the manipulation box off we can have a look at some of the features so we can hit explode as you'll see that's broke that out into its constituent parts that assembly and we can review all those those individual parts um, we can set that back um, and we can also do a number of things with placement we can use images and in this case we can use a QR code so as you'll see I'll turn this QR code over it's recognized it as a um, as a place to, to lock a model to as you see if I tap on it it locks the data then to that location um, so it's all about using the QR code for locating the um, model so if we have a look at some other features, if we click on information, so again, if you've got metadata in external systems or in your CAD data, we can bring that in. So as you see, there's a huge list here of um, pertinent information to the component that we've selected. So if I select another one, in this case, the isolator, if I look at the material there, it's quite dark. Um, so go down and look at the material. So it's nylon there, and it might be, you know, I'd, I'd like to see how this looks in a different material. So we can come in again if we select materials. Um, there's a, a number of different materials we can apply. So if we come metals, aluminium, and then we can select that component and it changes the, the view state in the device itself. Um, so now if we start to take that to the next level, if we start to look at collaborative work, um, I can load in some more data. So as you can see, we've got the collaboration session open. There's one colleague who is... Um, on a different device so he's sat at a desktop joining this session and you can see also in the room I've got another colleague um, and you can see his avatar locked to his head so the Microsoft HoloLenses can share information they can share location and we can use that from within our application to lock um, avatars to real to real real time locations so um, if we load in another model you see I've looked chosen a bigger data set here it's an automotive engine so if I pick that up again I can place it in the working location between us all um, and you see this manipulation box that surrounds the data you can move and revolve that um, in any orientation essentially so if I grab the edge I can revolve that data set and everyone that's in the session can see this happen in real time so if I pass that to my colleague so I've passed control to my colleague now um, and he's in control of the movement so you'll see I'm doing nothing and, and the data's revolving in the session for us. You'll see that my menu options have also been reduced. So the, the main controller gets all of the menu options and there are minimal controls for the, the passive users. Um, so if he passes me that back, you'll see my menu choices have now become, um, become greater. So I can come in and this time, for example, take a measurement. So if I come to the geometry here, if I click point one to snap to, and then I select point two, it's just a nominal dimension but you can drag that out then and you can see my colleague um, who's in the same room as me there also reviewing the dimensions that I'm adding so the host presenter will be able to um, to add bits to the geometry and control it and it's visible to the other users if I pass that to my colleague Matt um, he's now in control and he can um, start to interrogate the model so if we skip to his view so you can see Matt's menu options are now the controllers um, and he's going to start to hide some components so selected visibility there and if we overlay my view you can see this happening in real time so Matt's hiding um, some components and as I look at it so in the bottom right hand that's my view um, and the main view's Matt's 
So we can also add comments. So we can record pictures, video, audio, and associate it to the model itself. Um, so Matt's gonna take an image here, so he selects picture. Um, if you do an air tap, you can snap that picture and you can label that up, add any notes that you need to. Um, so Matt starts typing here. So as you can see, we won't, um, won't look at all of that, but if we come back to my view now, you can see that I've still got the, the, um, the smaller menu items. Matt's finishing his comment, um, but once he is complete as a passive user, I can still review the comments that have been added. So if I select comments and review, I've now got one comment added by Matt. Um, I can select that comment and you can see there the image, um, the location it was taken, the note that was added and the image that was recorded. So they're all recorded in sessions and they can be saved, um, saved against the collaboration sessions that are open. So now we're going to move on to factory layout experience. Um, and what this capability is essentially is multiple model loads. So being able to bring in um, a number of different pieces of geometry, lay them out, place them and make decisions um, on factory planning and factory layout, but using digital digital models to, to represent um, the machinery that might be added. So um, if we take a look at this session, so you'll see I'm in a collaboration session again. Um, my same two colleagues are with me, Matt and Adam. Um, but you'll see that we've got multiple models placed around this room now. Um, and when we load the menu, um, this time we can select individual components. So um, if I click on manipulation, what I can then do is say, actually, let's, let's take this racking. It doesn't actually belong here. Let's move it. So we can pick it up. And you see you get a notion of the floor. So you can snap geometry to the floor. Um, you let go and it hits the floor level. So it may be that we also need to rotate this. So again, we can use the manipulation box for this. So if I grab the edge, um, I can rotate this and decide, actually it needs to go at the end of this line, not at the end of the other line. Um, so you see, I've placed that geometry in place. Okay, so now I'm happy with that. Um, so if we start to look at, again, a few more bits of the functionality, what we've also got here is animation. So you'll see I've got an animation available. So if you've got simulation in your, in your geometry and you wanna be able to replay that, um, in real life, obviously we, we can do that. So if we bring the menu back up, you see if we hit play, what we've got is the the movement for this robot of the, the welding arc of this um, of this robot and that's replaying. So everyone in the session can see it. So as you can see, my colleagues next to me, um, and we're all seeing how the movement of that robot w would happen um, if it was placed in this location, which obviously, if you're if you're planning areas to put things helps you if you if you know the movement um so if we take a turn around now you'll see that we've also got some geometry here some benches and it may be that we want to add some brand new geometry in so we can do that in the device so we can just say actually let's open the, the geometry and add new add new files in um equally we can take copies of stuff that's already there so if we group these two benches together it could say actually i want two more of these benches so we can copy and paste them so we've grouped them we can click copy paste um, actually let's drop them on the floor over here and it might be that you've not placed them in the correct location as you can see those benches are a bit further behind the ones that are currently there so what we can also use is again alignment and it, they're all just functions that help you place place digital items in in real life essentially so we've selected two faces to align we hit align and you see it's brought those benches into um, into line with each other and we can again click on measurement so in this instance if we want to use measurement to check a clearance hole it might be that you need um, to be able to walk through this gap so we've measured there 391 of uh, 94 sorry obviously not not big enough for somebody to walk through so we can say actually okay let's let's drag these out now then let's place these in a more logical position so yeah you know 750 800 mil let's make it that this is how it will look you know will it fit will it clash with the wall and it's all about using digital geometry to make decisions um, based on your layouts. So now we're on to the final section, Azure Remote Rendering. So this is if you have so much data that you've exceeded the capabilities of the device, um, what we can do is process geometry in the Azure Remote Rendering space, so in the cloud, um, and live stream that to, the, to the device so you can use it in real time. If we take a look at this, so now when we log into our app, um, so we can log in as my user, um, rather than loading geometry directly to the device, we can select the remote rendering section. 
So if we select that, we then choose which region that we want to render in. So we select it local to where we are in the globe. So click UK South. And depending on the volume of data, which will define which server quality you need. So now when you go to select a model, you'll see we have here a huge factory layout. We can select remote rendering from the experiences. So if we hit remote rendering, we'll now load in a huge factory, factory line data set. So you'll see we've got three full um, factory lines here. So I'm just taking a glance. And what we're in at the moment is something that we call tabletop mode. So you'll see this isn't full scale. This is shrunken down. Um, obviously, this would be meters and meters of data. Um, but yeah, this is a shrunken down form called um, tabletop mode. And yeah, if we take a glance, you'll see some of the data similarly to what we rendered on site. But this is all being rendered um, in the cloud and using your internet connection, so your network speed to stream it down to the device. Um, and again, it's all about making decisions and presenting your data a way that's usable um, so you can see it at full scale. So if we come back, what we've done now is we've set it to full scale mode so you can see, um, albeit in our office, there um, you've now got a full scale production line that you can walk up and down and use. And there's a notion of waypoints in here. So there are set locations that you can define to enable you to move around huge data sets. So we can take a walk down here. Um, as you can see, I'm glancing around, but you can see all the all the geometry being rendered in the distance. And as I say, Azure Remote Rendering really comes into its own when it's um, huge volumes of data. So if we walk over to it, we can see um, obviously some boxes full of components here. Let's take a, a little walk further around. We've got some press machines. Um, and, and while all this is being rendered in the cloud, we can do what we did previously in factory layout. We can render geometry still using the device. So we can bring in more components um, and start to apply a factory layout again. Um, so if I bring the menu back, you'll see we go to add. Um, we can select some data. We've got some options there from the server. We choose the bench that we've previously seen. Um, and that's now rendering that on device. So it's bringing it locally. You've got the, you know, the scenery has been rendered in the cloud, but you've got local geometry being rendered too. And you can do all the same features that we showed previously in factory layout. And so that's it really, you know, it shows you the art of the possible um, with the HoloLens. You know, we've gone from small scale, single components being rendered and interrogated locally to, you know, millions of polygons, large factory data. Um, and it's all possible. So I think really what we need now is to, um, obviously, if you're interested in any part of this to, to, to get in touch with us and we can talk you through in a bit more detail, which, whichever bit is pertinent to you.